It's hot out there, and the downside of summer is an invasion of mosquitoes. Not only are their bites itchy and uncomfortable, but they also carry disease. And experts have been warning us that mosquito season here in Southern California will be worse than usual because of all the rain we had over the winter. So is there a natural way to repel those insects? Yes, there is. Let's bring in Marilyn Bonham from Armstrong Garden Center. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for being here with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm kind of hiding behind this lavender. <laughs> I'm kind of right now. Um, you brought some plants in that people can grow or they can buy to repel these mosquitoes. Can we start with the lavender? Yeah, of course. So everyone knows that lavender has a really nice scent. It's it does, really pungent. Yeah. So um, and that's actually what repels insects, those really strong smells. So. Um, but it is important to note that when you're using these for insect repellent, um, it does have to actually be touched oh. because it's the oils. Just so like you can put lavender oil on your body and that will repel? Yes. Okay. That really? That's good I had no know. idea. Mm -hmm. That's easy enough to make, right? You can just put some essential oil with water and like a spray can spray mm -hmm. it on yourself. Yep. And that's the same thing with pretty much all of these. Oh, um, it's so it's good. their scent that, that repels them. So. We're going to have you guys make a nice Yay. Um, Yay. We love gardening. So this is <laughs> Jamie a great, loves it especially. <laughs> I do. This is a great way to have something uh, on your deck or outside around you. So you can just touch them and I'm and scared have, of damaging it. Is, no, this, no, it's is okay. this lemon balm I have yes, in my hand? Yes, it hands? is. You have a lemon balm and you've got a nepeta or a catnip. Um, you just pop them out and then what you're going to want to do is ruffle up the roots a little bit before oh, you ruffle. plant it. Oh, ruffle. All right. Okay. Ruffle. My mom is a really good gardener, but I've never really. And we always add starter properly. fertilizer. So oh, this is okay. Dr. Earth Root Zone, but we just add yeah. a little puff into, okay. into the hole and you plant it in. This helps to give it essential nutrients so it can really start that root um, growth in the new pot. Oh, I had okay. no idea that that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> This is so useful. It okay. is. So the nepeta or the catnip, that has something called nepetalactones. And that's another oh, uh, really, pungent. yep, really pungent, smelly compound, and that repels insects as well. Um, Can I have a little bit more starter mint? fertilizer? Oh, yeah, of Thank course. you. That is lemon balm. Oh, okay. this is the lemon balm. Okay. Yep, but also mint, spearmint, um, has menthol oils, just like menthols. They smell really strong, uh, and that is what I love mint. Yeah. Now, do you have to be careful if you have pets with any of these plants? Actually, so the nepeta, especially the cat nip, if you have a cat, it will want to roll in it. So that uh, is pretty much okay. the risk or that the you're, neighbor's cats. you're running with that. Yeah. Um, but you can pinch it off and give it to your cats as like a fun little treat for them because they can. love it. But yeah. dogs don't like it, right? No, dogs aren't specifically um, attracted to it. But um, can I have a starter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse We're me. both taking this so seriously. <laughs> it, well, we want them to last and survive. Uh, the other one that, that I really want to touch on is marigolds. So these are common in a lot of gardens, but these actually, they give off such a strong scent, um, and it's pyrethrum. Really? Um, that oh, it just being so around, good. you don't even have to Thank touch you. them, just being around can repel insects. Really? Yep. So up to, you I have to no be pretty idea. close, so up to about three feet, it's going to give you some I'm just going to sit in my new potted garden yes. at all times. Yeah, that's, so you can either pinch off a leaf of something like the lemon balm and rub it on your skin, or the, like I said, the uh, marigolds, you can just have them around. So I do have to ask, because I feel like this winter, my, my rosemary and my lavender, everything did so well, it was growing, it was beautiful. I didn't think about watering. Mm -hmm. Now, as it's getting hot, a lot of it's drying out. What, it, what do I need to do to maintain all this? Yeah. So actually, all of these are relatively what we call water-wise plants. They are low water, so they're going to require a big soak, and then you can let them dry out fairly, fairly well before you're going to have to water them again. So that's really nice when it's really hot. It's not going to be an everyday watering like some of the, you know, yeah. softer plants. Good would for be. Southern California. And you yeah. know, my problem too, when I plant a variety like this, then some of them are like overwatered, <laughs> and some of them are. You right. have to be sure to be conscious mm -hmm. of getting plants that require the same amount of water. Yeah, yeah, right? and all of these are water-wise, so this is a great a great option for people uh, to plant in a planter all together. Awesome. Well, well Marilyn Bottom, thank you so much. We had so much fun from Armstrong Garden Center. If you want more information on these plants, check out our website, kcalnews.com. We now want to go